Hello and welcome to Cloud Tech 10 for the 13th of November 2017. I'm Mark and I'm going to tell you all the latest news about Microsoft Azure from the past week in 10 minutes or less. You can now monitor your Azure resources using the popular open source tool Grafana, thanks to the Azure Monitor Data Source plugin. This plugin lets you access data from Application Insights and Azure Monitor. If you have an existing Grafana instance, you can go to the Data Source Plugins page for Azure Monitor to install the plugin. If you haven't already got Grafana, you can get up and running quickly via the Azure Marketplace. Search for Grafana in the Marketplace, choose Get It Now, and then click Continue. This will take you to the Azure portal. Click Create, then fill in the required information. You will need to provide a username and authentication details for the server and password details for your new Grafana Grafana instance. Select a resource group and a location, and then configure the virtual machines. By default, two standard A2 virtual machines are selected, which you can modify if needed. Create a new or select an existing storage account. You will need to provide a unique domain name for your Grafana instance, and configure the virtual networks and subnets. Click OK and then create to begin the deployment, which takes around five minutes or so to complete. Once the deployment is complete, you can view the network security group configuration and you'll see that the service is accessible over port 3000. View the public IP address details and you'll be able to obtain the IP address. Type that IP address and port 3000 into a browser and you'll reach the Grafana login screen. The default login name is admin and the password is the one you entered earlier during the deployment. To connect your Azure subscription, you'll need a service principle. To configure one, go to the Azure Active Directory section of the Azure portal, select App Registrations and then New Application Registration. Provide a name and a sign-on URL. I use the IP address and port of the Grafana instance. Once that's been created, open the App Registration and make a note of the application ID. Choose Keys and provide a name for the client access key and a duration. After you save, you'll see the key value. This is the only time you will ever see this key value displayed here, so copy it to a safe place now. You will need to grant this application access to your subscription. From the subscriptions view in the portal, choose the subscription you want to work with. Then go to access control and then choose add. Select the reader role from the list, then choose the application that you just created and click save. Now we can configure Grafana to connect to Azure. From the Grafana home dashboard, choose add data source. Provide a name and then choose Azure monitor from the type drop down list. Fill in the required details for your Azure subscription, the subscription ID, the tenant ID, for your Azure Active Directory instance. Their client ID is the application ID that we created when we registered the application, and the client secret is the key value we copied earlier. If we want to use Grafana with Application Insights, we have the API key and application ID of our Application Insights instance here. Click Add and Grafana will validate the values provided and add the Azure Monitor data source. Now we're ready to create our first dashboard. Click on Panel Title and then Edit. Then it's a simple matter of selecting the Azure resources and metrics you want to see. So for example, I choose a resource group. I'll choose the Virtual Machine Scale Sets namespace choose the scale set and I want to watch the CPU percentage utilization and let's add a second metric to that graph I'll just add the same values but for a different scale set it's as simple as that I can now just continue adding more resources and creating dashboards as needed to give me the views I need Azure App Service and Azure Functions are now generally available on Azure Stack you get all the same features as seen in the Azure Public Cloud including continuous integration continuous delivery and deployment slots all available in your own data center you can now mount a blob storage container on Linux platforms using the Fuse adapter for blob storage at this time the adapter is in preview, so the installation process requires that you build from source, but this is straightforward enough. Once logged into your Linux server, first clone the Git repository for the Azure Fuse adapter. Next, there are a couple of packages that are needed before you can start the build. I'm running on an Ubuntu server, so I'll use this command to do this. For other Linux distributions, check out the installation notes to see the correct command. Once those packages have completed installation, run the build script and wait for that to finish. The adapter uses the local disk as a buffer cache, and for Azure-based virtual machines, it's best to use the ephemeral disk for this purpose. So we'll create a directory under MNT and set Set the owner to match the user that will be mounting the blob. The adapter reads a configuration file in order to get the account name, account key, and container name details. To mount a blob container, use the blob fuse command specifying the location where the container will be mounted, the location for the buffer cache, and the location of the configuration file. I'm using an HTTPS only blob container, so I also specify the use HTTPS flag. Now, if I switch to the directory where the container has been mounted, I can see the files located there. Azure Analysis Services has added a new query replica scale out feature. This makes it possible to distribute client queries among multiple query replicas in a pool and to separate processing from the query pool. Until now, analysis services typically used one server for both processing and queries. This could mean a performance decrease if a high query workload occurred, especially if model processing was happening at the same time. With this feature, you can scale out by dragging this slider, creating up to seven additional query replicas. If you want to separate out the processing server from the query pool, you can select that option here. Analysis services will automatically replicate models across all replicas when they are created. When you process your models, you'll need to resync 
synchronize, which you can do by clicking this icon. Or alternatively, you can do this programmatically through the Analysis Services REST API. Virtual Machine Scale Sets now includes a preview of automatic operating system upgrades. Once configured, the feature will automatically apply the latest OS image to virtual machines in a scale set without user intervention. Each time a new version of an image is published, upgrades will be commenced using a rolling schedule so that the scale set is upgraded in patches. Right now, Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2016, and Ubuntu 16.04 are supported. As this is a preview feature, you'll first need to register to use it, which can be done using the PowerShell command register Azure RM provider feature and specifying the feature name Auto OS Upgrade Preview. It's also recommended that your applications use health probes. To register for this feature, use the register Azure RM provider feature command again, this time with the feature name Allow VMSS Health Probe. It can take a few minutes for these features to be registered, so give it around 10 minutes after you've run these commands. You'll need to ensure that the automatic OS upgrade property is set to true in the scale set model definition. For full details on setting up automatic operating system upgrades, see this page in the Virtual Machine Scale Sets documentation. You can now back up Windows Server System State with Azure Backup. This feature was previously in preview, but is now generally available. So now, in addition to backing up your files, Azure Backup can protect servers running as Active Directory domain controllers, cluster details for file servers, or metabase data for IIS web servers, as this information is held in System State. <laughs>